Hi, Craig Garrett here with you this morning. Me and the rooster. <laughs> I just want to share a couple thoughts with you this morning. Um, I was reading in my favorite book of the New Testament, uh, the book of Philippians, and it reminded me of something that happened uh, to, a, to a guy. He was in the store and he pulled down a bottle of, um, it was kiwi raspberry juice. That doesn't sound good to me, but it sounded good to him. He pulled down this bottle of kiwi raspberry juice and it said on the front, all natural, all juice, you know, something, all the things that they say when they want you to buy this all natural juice. And so he turns the, it over and he begins to read the label. And when he reads the label, the first thing on the label was water. And then it was apple juice. And then it was something else. And it was two or three things went on down the list <clears throat> until about fifth down the list, it was kiwi. And then about seventh down the list, it was raspberry. And if you know anything about how those lists are organized, they're listed by the heaviest ingredient or the greatest, the largest percentage uh, ingredient is at the is the first thing, and then it goes down in descending order. So the thing that was in that bottle the most is water. And then the second most ingredient was apple juice, not kiwi juice, not raspberry, but apple juice. And then there were two or three other things that finally, by you got to number five, and it said kiwi, and the, uh, or not kiwi, pomegranate. It was it was it was not kiwi. It was pomegranate raspberry. So about fifth down the line was pomegranate juice, and then finally on down number seventh it was raspberry. And then there were some other things in there. And uh, before you got to the raspberry, it said assorted flavorings and so forth. So. You know, he looked at this, and on the front, it looked good. On the front, it looked like it's this 100% natural, all-natural kiwi, or not kiwi, pomegranate raspberry juice. Had a beautiful picture uh, of all these pomegranate seeds falling onto a bed of raspberries, and looked fantastic. Looked all-natural, 100% juice, the whole deal. But what it really was was a fake. Looked good on the outside, but not real on the inside. And he put the bottle back and it made me think about, you know, if that's not the way a lot of Christians are, our labeling on the front doesn't really show what we are on the inside. It doesn't show our true ingredients sometimes. And uh, it made me think about this passage over in Philippians. If you look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul said, and this I pray that your love, that your love may still, I'm sorry, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in discernment. He said, I want you to be discerning. I want you to, to understand the difference between right and wrong and good and bad and things that are trivial and things that aren't trivial. Uh, he said, you need to be able to discern what is the real deal for your life. You need to understand that, uh, you know, you get the right ingredients in there, that you might get involved in something that looks good uh, on the outside, but really isn't. It looks good for you to get involved in, but really isn't. It looks like it's important, but really it's trivial. He said, I want you to have that discernment so that you can become the person that you need to be. Um, he said you, you, you need to be able to follow that. And here's the reason he wants you to do that. He says that you may approve the things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. He said, I want you to be the real deal. I want you to be sincere. I want you to be the genuine article so that when people look at you, they don't just see a nice label on the outside, I, that they don't just see something that looks good on the outside, but they see something that is real and genuine and something that they can pattern themselves after. You know, after. And you may say, well, I, I don't want to be something that somebody follows my example. You know what? It's going to happen regardless. Um, and it's saying, you know, Paul's saying, I want you to be able to discern the right things to put in your life, the right things to be involved in, the right things to be around, the, the things that are important, the things that you should be a part of. I want you to be able to discern that because the day is coming. It says until the day of Christ, the day is coming when we're going to stand before Christ and we're going to have to give an account of 
how we have formulated our life. In other words, God's going to turn the bottle over and He's going to look at the ingredients. Christ is going to look at us and He's going to see if not just we have a nice wrapper on the outside, but He's going to look at the ingredients, what has really made up our lives, what we're sincerely about, what we're genuinely about. And we need to pay attention to that. Um, I read a an article that was written by a secular columnist uh, in the New York Times. It was his name is Nicholas Kristof, and it was an op-ed column for the New York Times back in March 15, March 2015. And uh, Kristof makes it clear he's not an evangelical Christian. He is not. He's not claiming that at all. So he's not promoting this because he's a Christian. Uh, but he said, "I've been truly awed." Here's what the article said: "I've been truly awed by those who have seen." those I've seen in so many remote places combating illiteracy and warlords and famine and disease, humbly struggling to do the Lord's work as they see it. And he focuses on a man by the name of Dr. Stephen Foster. He's 65. He's a little white-haired missionary who lived in Angola for 37 years. And much of that period when he was in the Angolan regime, when he was in Angola, there was a Marxist regime that was very hostile to Christians that lived in that area. But here's what he says. Uh, Foster said, We were granted visas by the very people that would tell us publicly, publicly, your churches are going to disappear in 20 years. But privately, they would tell him, you're the only ones we know willing to serve in the midst of the fire. And Christoph writes, One son contracted polio. A daughter survived cerebral malaria. The family nearly starved when the area was besieged during the war, and Dr. Foster insisted on sharing the family's rations with a hundred famishing families. Christoph makes this conclusion. He says, the next time you hear someone at a cocktail party, that's something we all attend a lot, uh, next time you hear someone at a cocktail party mock evangelicals, think of Dr. Foster and those like him. These are folks who don't so much proclaim the gospel as live it. They deserve better. He probably doesn't know how much a man like Dr. Foster also, also proclaimed it. But the reality is this is somebody who was genuine. This is somebody who was sincere. This is somebody that when he stands before Christ, in all likelihood, and Christ turns him over and looks at the ingredients, looks at what's on the ingredients label, He's going to see all the things that he's looking for, all the things that he wants. And, you know, that's what Paul is calling us to be. That's what he's calling us to do. He says, I don't just want you to have a pretty label on the outside. I don't want people to look at you and say, well, boy, they go to church every Sunday. And, and, and that's a good thing. But it's one thing to go to church on Sunday. But what do you live Monday through Saturday? What kind of person are you? How much time do you spend with the Lord? How much is your life being filled with His presence? One of these days, we will stand before Christ. One of these days, we will give an account for what makes us up on the inside. It doesn't matter how, look, how good you look on the outside to the people around you. What matters is, have you taken Christ in? And when Paul is calling them to do this <clears throat> over in Philippians, he says, I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge. He says, I want your knowledge, the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of the Word of God, the knowledge of what Christ has been and done. And, and the only way you get that knowledge is you study. You spend time in the Word of God. He says, I want your knowledge to cause you to drive your love your knowledge of Christ, your knowledge of who He is, your knowledge of what He wants you to be. He says, I want that to drive you and to make you a person. As you develop that knowledge, it gives you the ability to discern what you need to discern, to tell the difference between something you're involved in, whether or not it's something that is, is, is good and important, or if it's something that seems important, but is really just eating up all your time and keeping you away from the things of the Lord and is really just trivial in nature. So Paul challenges us. 
in the 11th verse, he says, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. He says, as you as you learn to discern this, as you spend time uh, developing that knowledge, as you spend time growing in your relationship with Christ, he says you're going to be filled with the fruits of who Christ is and what he is and what he wants in your life. Well, my time is gone. You can't see this one. This is this is Peanut. And Peanut is talking to me. She's come here. Let me see if I can grab her. Oh! Grab her for a minute. Here, Peanut. Say hi to everybody. Okay? She rarely lets me hold her, so this is amazing. Um, she's normally very nervous. But, anyway, time's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it, my mind works like that. It's just like I'll be going in this direction and something will happen and bing! I go off in that direction so forgive me <laughs> forgive me for that I hope you have a wonderful day today I hope it's a day that's absolutely filled with blessing and joy and I hope it's a day where you will grow in your knowledge so that you can become a discerning person so that you're sincere and real and then when, when Jesus looks at your label he sees 100% child of God I hope you have a great day today if you enjoy this, hit, hit uh, subscribe or share it with somebody. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, share, share the link with somebody else. I hope you have a great day. I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.